Hey there, Mike here, and today I'm going to show you how to use AMD Overdrive to do a very simple overclock, nothing crazy, and this is really for the beginners. I personally am not a crazy overclocker, so uh, I really think that this tutorial needs to be out there for somebody who really has no idea what they're doing to figure out how to use AMD Overdrive. Uh, obviously, a more dedicated overclocker does it through the BIOS, but this is a really great tool, a really great crutch you can use to kind of get into the game. Anyway, so first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you know what your CPU is. And if you're a hundred thousand percent sure you know exactly what it is, then you can skip this part. But otherwise, you'll install CPU-Z, which is this great little app thing here. And you'll run it, and it'll bring up all this information. See, look, AMD FX8350. That is my processor, this little 8-core thingy here. Um, basically, what you're going to be looking for here is just to make sure that you have AMD as the brand, uh, not Intel, or if you're really unfortunate, it's something like VIA. Uh, but that should be pretty easy to identify. It is everywhere. Here's a little more information down here. Also note the exact specific processor that you're using. You're going to want that because the next step is to go online and do a something search of your processor. So for me, A350FX overclock. And then you're going to want to just browse the web. Just go through usually Tom's Hardware as good sites. Look at people's experiences with this. If you find that people have not been able to overclock it, assume that they're smarter than you and you're not going to be able to make it work because that's usually going to be the case. Uh, if you find that people have stories and are really just sharing tips, then it probably overclocks pretty well. Most modern processors do. Uh, a lot of mobile ones are really the only ones that don't, so just be wary of that. And then you're all set if you have both of those. Now I'm going to assume you know how to install AMD Overdrive. I'm going to close this. So just download it from AMD's website. It's really easy to find. Just a really generic version. So click this. That little warning that comes up, it's worth knowing. Uh, it's basically everything you'd assume they'd tell you. Like, if you break your processor by overclocking to a thousand terahertz a second, AMD's not going to send you a little gift basket saying, we're so sorry, here's three Xeons. But, uh, so yeah, you're going to want to go to the clock and voltage under the performance control. Now, this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using really the voltage bar and the core zero multiplier. For those of you with a multi-core system, which should be most people by now, it's 2014 when I'm recording this, you should uh, see everything else grayed out here. Don't worry about that. Multiplying core zero pulls everything down with it, even though it doesn't look like it. So the first thing you want to do, especially if you have an FX, I know this is common with the FX processors, is disable turbo. They don't like each other very much. So just go in here, click enable turbo core, uncheck it, click OK, and then apply. And you'll get this very similar thing. You know, use your brain, click OK. There. Ah, that was your first multi, you know, modification to your CPU. Congratulations. You uh, disabled turbo. Now we got to do the actual overclock. So before you do anything, be wary of something called the silicone lottery. You probably did a search for something like, oh, what's the voltage that matches up with this frequency for my processor? What's for this? And we're really confused when you were finding a bunch of different things or people that just weren't telling you. Well, the answer is because of something called the silicone lottery. It's basically this concept that not all processors are the same, even amongst the same line. For instance, my A350, I think, is very nicely binned in terms of voltage versus frequency and how it handles temperature. Someone else might not be so lucky, and their processor to run the stock might need to be something a little higher. Um, but uh, just to give you an example of that, mine does really well. Actually, you can go down a little bit under voltage, I'm gonna click OK, and voila, look, the system didn't crash. I'm even still recording this video. Uh, everything's still hitting the frequency I needed to hit and I have undervolted it a little bit. But you're probably saying, okay, this is all cool, these little fun facts, but what does this have to do with me? Well, it means that unfortunately for you, you're going to have to figure out the combination of voltage to processor frequency. And that's a little scary at first, because as you know, and it's very true, by messing with the voltage, you can break your CPU, actually. Now, unless you do something really weird that I'm not aware of, playing with the frequency and not touching the voltage will only mess with your experience and operating system and not the actual processor itself. Which is nice because overdrive resets every time on boot. Uh, you're not locked into something with the BIOS. We have to go into BIOS again and change it. So this is nice for fiddling and figuring out exactly where you are. So for instance, watch what I'll do. Say I want to overclock a little bit. Click this and I'll use the right arrow key now. I'm not going to drag that. Right arrow key. Ah, look at that. Everything went up by 100 megahertz. Now this multiplier here, these numbers, everything makes sense if you do the math, if you really want to do it, but really just focus on this number up here. So watch, so I'm going to bring it up by 100 megahertz, I'm at 4100 megahertz now, awesome. Now I'm going to click apply and cool, nothing crashed right away. That's because my processor can, you know, this is a little more voltage than it needs for 4.0 and it's actually stable at 4.1 I found out on the stock. 
stability tests are actually built in if you go over here I would really suggest doing these every single time you try a new combination uh, don't use all of them because then you're gonna slow down your computer and just heat it up but just do that and once you find a stable it runs about an hour by the way you should do and once you find a stable clock and voltage match you can just start doing some real-world tests and the best way to do that is by running one of your favorite applications and also let me just drag this in for my secret monitor and also using something like core temp core temp is a great little free app that will let you follow your core temperatures uh... it has minimum maximum see max was fifty two i got a little toasty a little later because i was doing some video rendering and my nvidia card is sitting on my bed right now so i had to do it all off of cpu um, but yeah, you can use this, follow the temperatures, make sure it doesn't get really nuts. Again, Google is your friend. Be sure to look up what the maximum safe temperature is for your CPU. Mine is 60 Celsius, so I am totally fine. 52 is, I know it seems hot, but it's well under that, and that is very safe. Uh, I'm going to put this back over here, but be sure to download this and be sure to use it with some real-world tests. <clears throat> Alright, so you're like, oh, 100 megahertz and you got that for free, that's not that's nothing I care about. I want to get those extra frames in the games. I want to go a little higher. Well, for that, you're going to have to mess with the voltage bar. Now, if I tried to go straight ahead and be like, okay, say I want 4.4. Let's go to 4.4, click apply, okay, done. No, that's not going to work. It's probably going to give me some kind of blue screen before I even get to the stability test. If not, the stability test will definitely crash my computer. That's because it's asking too much of the processor with not enough voltage and you're gonna have to figure out that on your own you're gonna have to bump it up and the way you do that is by finding the instabilities first so hopefully you don't have to crash your computer sometimes this will report it if it does crash don't worry your CPU is fine uh, as long as you didn't mess with the voltage more than you've already tested was safe so check this out so say I go to 4.2 I hit apply yeah and then I go to my stability tests and I run it and it says not stable or maybe unfortunately it crashes Then I know okay 1.3125 is not enough to run my processor at 4200 megahertz so I'm going to bump it up a little bit click apply and then I'm gonna go back to stability test I'm gonna run these again say it's stable I'm like okay seems cool I'm gonna run a real-world application say it's stable I'm like okay let's check some temperatures I look max temp was still in the safe range okay cool I now know that this combination of voltage and frequency is safe so what do you do when you found a safe voltage and a safe frequency you start and go back to frequency. Bump it up again, 4.3. Apply, run, unstable. Okay, let's give it a little bump. Apply, run, unstable. Okay, give it another little bump. Apply, run. Oh, cool, very cool. Looks like it works again. Do the same thing again. Now, an example is what I've gotten up to on my cooler. It's also very good to know your cooler for the sake of Tom's hardware. I usually run at 4.5 megahertz, and that runs stable. Oh, I messed it up a little bit. So I have to use the clicker, I hate that. At 0.375 usually. Yep. So see everything's running fine. The video obviously hasn't crashed. Um, this is what I found is good for mine. So I wonder what's good for yours. So feel free to post that in the comments section. Uh, again, this is actually my first video that's not on some weird Linux software. So trying to expand the channel a little bit. Tell me what I did well, tell me what I didn't. Tell me if there's anything you want to know about AMD Overdrive or any real software. Uh, and yeah, post what you get on your overclocks, uh, what you can manage to do. And I really hope it works out for you. Hope we don't have any blown CPUs. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask. I'll be checking out the comment section. And I'm running out of time, so thank you very much. Again, name's Mike, and bye bye.